up for that great testimony. I just love her accent. I love that. Where's she from, Australia or something? Where's that? Britain. Oh, wow. That's awesome. I love it. How you guys doing this morning? I'm so glad to see every one of you here. And, and we're right now a church on the move. And what I mean by that is God's given us instructions, given us vision, and we're moving. Things are happening. Yesterday we had our, our Pomona team. They're out there on the streets. And they actually, they actually did a prayer march on the city. The mayor came, chief of police came, city officials came. And we did a prayer right there on City Hall, the steps of City Hall. Then the team went out there and knocked on over 2,000 doors to let people know about Jesus. So that was awesome. So every week we're seeing great things happen in our, in our uh, Tijuana church. One of the outreaches that they do because they don't have a midweek service, they have a midweek service on the streets. And one of the ministries that they carry out is a prayer ministry at the hospital. And this, at the hospital, there's a lot of people impoverished, in pain, that are hurting. They have no medical coverage. They're just hoping that they get, someone will take them and relieve their pain. So we have a team every single week that's working those lines, praying for, for people, laying hands, hands on them, and we're getting testimonies of people actually getting physically healed in those lines. This is happening every, you know, every week that's happening. So we're excited about what God is doing. And now as a church, we're moving and God is expanding and he's given us more territory. This is how it works. When you're faithful with what God's given you, this is, this is what Jesus said. If you're faithful with little, I'll make you ruler over much. This is a principle that we have to, spiritual principle we must understand. You could be aiming for much. That means you got the dream and you want great things to happen. But that doesn't happen unless you're faithful with what's in your hand right now. God doesn't multiply nothing. He multiplies the seed he gives you. If you don't work with what you have and work at the level you have now or you're at now, the next level will not be released. God does not graduate you like maybe your school graduated you. You just got too old. We got to get you out of here. God doesn't graduate when someone gets older or seniority. He graduates when you finally learn and are faithful. God graduates faithful hearts. So what God does, he gives us responsibility and he gives us vision a little at a time. When we first started this church, he gave us a vision of just knocking on doors on one block. And he said, find their needs, love the people. And as we started knocking on those doors, we found some basic needs. In the neighborhood, we found homeless people that were hungry. We didn't pray for God to bring them food. We went to the store, brought groceries, went to the neighborhood restaurants, <laughs> brought them food. Sometimes it meant ladies getting together and making some rice and beans and going to State of Brothers and buying some fried chicken. And we would bring it to those that were hungry. And the Bible says, when I was naked, you clothed me. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was in prison, you came to me. When I was sick, you came to me. The idea is there's needs out there and God will be begin to reveal needs. He'll begin to reveal hurt. He'll begin to reveal gaps that we could fill with God's love with our resources, with our wisdom and our experience. So now when we're faithful with what God has given us and what has God given us? He's given us a church. He's given us some seats in this building and it's our responsibility to fill. He's given maybe your marriage and children, a ministry, an opportunity. Stop focusing on the big and start focusing on what God has given you. If you're faithful with little, then God will make you ruler over much. We're in a time that God has given us three major op uh, opportunities. Say it with me, three opportunities. And the first opportunity that God has given us in this season, he's given us an opportunity to build a Christian school in Kenya for our orphans. There's a scripture in James 1.27 that says this, the worship... 
that God wants is this. Caring for orphans or widows who need help. And the scripture goes on, and keeping yourself free from the world's influence, evil influence. This is the kind of worship that God accepts as pure and good. Helping people that cannot help themselves. Also helping people that can't help you. There's one thing like the old saying, scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. The idea is, I want you to scratch my back, so I'm going to scratch yours. That's given with a motive. But when we're dealing with orphans in, in Kenya and, and Uganda, and we're responsible as a church for two orphanages, these are little boys and little girls that have been abandoned their whole lives. They don't have a father. They don't have a mother. We rescued them on the streets. Some of these little boys and little girls, these are real pictures of the orphans that we're feeding and taking care of and helping go to school. These kids are taught to go on the streets and try to find the older brothers and sisters, try to go out there and try to find a way to feed the younger brothers and sisters. Now, on the streets, there's a lot of ex exploiting. So they exploit them as prostitutes. Um, there's a lot of drug addiction. The kids are trying to find an escape of their pain. There's a lot of abuse on these streets. And these kids are ripe for abuse if we don't take care of them. So God has given us a responsibility. We're taking in orphans. We have a place that they sleep at night. We just built a church. This church has been launched by orphans. <laughs> Pastor Brian is right now, Pastor Brian, which is the pastor of this church, he's right now preaching at our downtown campus. He's here for a week or so, and he's going to go back. But Pastor Brian was one of the orphans that was rescued. His mother dropped him off because she couldn't feed him. What she did, she did it like a lottery. She put all the names of her kids in a, in a hat, and she said, the one that I pick is the one that's going to go to the orphanage because I can't feed all these mouths. Brian's name was picked. He was sent to that orphanage to never see his mother again. He is now, not only did he grow up in this orphanage, the orphanage was abandoned eventually, and there was no leader, and there was no pastor. As a young man in his 20s, God told him, this is going to be your life mission. I train you up in this house, and now you're going to be the pastor of this house. So now he's the pastor of that orphanage. Look at these little boys and little girls. Come on, those are our children that we're taking care of. How many know that's an opportunity? So now we have an opportunity to build a school. Now in Kakamega, where, this, where this, our orphanage is at, this is what's happening there. There's no such, really, such thing as a public school system. They have a private school system. And what's happening, the Muslims have realized this is a great opportunity to convert the little boys and little girls. So what they're doing, their strategy is, is to go in these areas and build schools and bring all the children in. And this is the, this is the string that's attached. You must become a Muslim to attend our school. When, when we have prayer time in Kakamega, in Kenya, the kids come up and their number one prayer request is this. I want to go to school. Pray I can go to school. And what God is telling us, I've already had a vision for them. The devil had a vision to abandon them, neglect them, and abuse them. I have a vision to restore them, to rescue them, educate them, and help them become prosperous and break the cycle. Come on, let's give some praise that God has a vision for them. Now, the greatest honor we could ever have, just some, say this honor. The greatest honor we could ever have, he is now saying, I have a vision. And this is the next question. Who shall I send to accomplish my vision? Now, he has to look at a church because God accomplishes his vision to save souls, transform lives, set people free, give them eternal life through the church. So now he's looking through all, through all the churches in the world and he said, which church has been faithful 
with what I've given them. So I can promote them with another opportunity. Because an opportunity is a promotion. Every time there's an opportunity, there's a promotion. Every time there's an opportunity to invest, there's a return. So don't ever look at it as an opportunity as something negative. Get excited about an opportunity because it's your next level of promotion. When God talks about opportunities, he's talking about people. I want to save a group of people. I want to bless a group of people. I want to let them know that I love them, that I care about them. So now God, from the beginning of time, it's not something he just came up with. I want to start a school in Kakamega, Kenya. Before the foundations of the earth, he already had, I'm going to build a school in Kakamega, Kenya. And I'm going to raise up a church in San Bernardino. And then they are going to take, hear my, hear my commission, hear my mission, hear my vision, and they're going to run with it. And they're going to build me a school in Kakamega, Kenya. It's going to be the first Christian school. These little boys and little girls see school over there, you got to pay to go to school. There's no free schooling system. I know in America, we take everything for granted. We don't even want to go to school. Those little boys and little girls know if they don't get educated, there's no future for them. They stay in their cycles of poverty. They know that if they do not get educated, they're going to have the same life as everyone around them. They want education. But this is a problem. They don't have any money. The poorest places in Kakamega are stuck. They're impoverished and they're going to be uneducated. So we got an opportunity to start something brand new that's never been done. That's called vision. When God gives you a vision, it's something that's never been done. And we get to start in Kakamega, Kenya, a school. And I believe it's going to be the foundation of reaching, come on, the whole Kenya and, and overflowing into Uganda. We get that opportunity. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to educate those little boys and little girls academically. And we're going to educate, educate them spiritually. They're going to have a foundation for real success. Academically and a foundation of training spiritually. Are you excited that God is going to use us? Come on. This is our time to worship. Let's worship right now. And God says, this is the kind of worship that I love is caring for the orphans and the widows who are in need. And that's what we're doing right now in Kakamega, Kenya. We just opened up two women's homes. A lot of those women, women are widows. They have no husbands. And they've, they've given themselves to prostitution because that's the only hustle they know. And we're rescuing them. And right now we're saying, we want to rescue prostitutes. It's great to want to rescue prostitutes, but there's no, going to be no rescuing unless there's an investment. We're investors. Right now, if you're new to this church, someone invested so you could be in the seats today. Millions of dollars were invested so you can be here and hear the good news of Jesus Christ and receive the gift of eternal life. Some of you, because there's been a seat available for you that someone sacrificed for, your marriage was restored. You were set free from an addiction. You would have committed suicide, but something happened. Because of someone's investment, we have, a, we have a women's home, a women's and children's home that's rescuing mamas that are on the streets with their little boys and little girls. And right now we can say, yes, mama, I know you don't have the money for first and last, but we got a place for you and your kids. You no longer have to live in the park. You no longer have to live in your car. You no longer have to live from couch to couch. We got a place for you. But there was an investment. Someone loved you before they ever knew you. That's amazing. And we're doing that over and over and over. And we're going to continue doing that over and over all over the world. The reason I'm letting you know this, it's never going to stop. There's going to be a cycle that God's going to bless us and we're going to take our blessings and invest it so someone else can be blessed. And when, does, when do we stop investing? We don't. To say that, to say when do we stop investing, you actually are saying when do I want to stop, God, when do I want to stop being blessed? Because this is what God does. He blesses you so you could be a blessing. So we got an opportunity with a school in Kenya. Our second opportunity is launch a new campus in Arizona. God gave me an image, and this was the image, that there's people in that city that are like in a concentration camp. 
They're bound. They're addicted. They're hopeless. They're massively and deeply depressed. They're tormented by demons. And they have no way out. They're imprisoned. But God, before the foundations of the earth, has prepared a way for the way to go into Safford, Arizona. This is what's happened. There's been a church that has invested 18 to 20 years preparing the ground to prepare for a harvest. This church has worked really hard. They said yes. Victory Fellowship is the name of the church. Victory Fellowship has said yes. We want to go ahead and transfer our church, transfer our assets so we can reach, come on, those that are in a concentration, demonic concentration camp right here in Safford, Arizona. So Safford said, uh, Victory Fellowship said yes. Our board this week got together and they said yes. God has said yes. Now God is waiting on our yes. Come on, do we have a yes in this house to go into Safford, Arizona and rescue souls for eternity now, and understand this, if we don't go, no one's going. That building right now is a movie theater and a church. And either we go or we don't go. If we don't go, this church turns in to just a movie theater. It's the nicest movie theater in the city. We're going to refurbish that place. We're going to make it not only the nice, we're going to make it a great church. We're going to make it the nicest building. Come on, it's going to be a building that everybody's going to be attracted to. It's going to be the center of the city. How many believe we could make that building beautiful and save and rescue souls? This is where we're at. Every one of these opportunities God's given us is going to take an investment. And our third opportunity is just Easter. And when I say Easter, Easter is a time where people, we're celebrating the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's the gospel. It's how people get saved, that Jesus died for you so you can be forgiven and be set free and have a relationship with God and receive the gift of eternal life. God has put this date on our calendar. We're only going to have so many Easter's in our lifetime. People say yes to come into church. Again, they're ready to say yes. Are you ready to say yes by inviting them? We have an investment. We're going to put in time. We're going to put in prayer. We're going to put in finances. So every one of these opportunities can be fulfilled. God is saying, you've been faithful with little. Let me transfer more to you. More responsibility, more assignments. How many want more responsibility and more assignments? Come on, church. Do we want more? And that's people. Come on. How, do we want to reach more people? So now, what do we got to do? On Easter, invite someone. And on Easter, let's go ahead and bring an offering so these dreams, these opportunities, these two visions, three visions can come to pass. I want to teach you a little bit. I, I woke up the other morning and I go, what do I preach on Sunday? Because we're in a series, Jesus Saved Me. And he goes, put that off for just one week. I want to let them know something. I want, I want you to let them know my response to their giving. So what I want to talk to you for a few moments is God's response to our giving. How many believe God responds to our giving? So we're going we're gonna to tie it up in just some simple lessons. And let's just see if this makes sense to you. If you're here for the first time, maybe... Uh, you have a mindset or you said something like this, the church, all they want is my money. And that's stopping you from receiving a message because you're thinking the end game is money. The end of this whole thing is not money. The end of everything is money to reach people. Money so we can have a home. Money so we could build a physical 
come on, physical school in Kenya, money so we could build a physical church in Kenya and in Uganda, and money so we could go ahead and reach the constant, come on, the demonic concentration camp there, money so we could go to Compton and start a church. This is the only place that our money is transferred into eternal lives, being saved for eternity. This is the greatest reach of our finances. I want to teach you some foundational lessons on giving. And, I, and the reason you want to know this is because it will build your faith and build an excitement to be able to share. We teach our little boys and little girls, share. But as we get old, as, as little boys and little girls, we have to teach them that because uh, my little grandson, Xander, I don't know where they learned this at demonic, it's, uh, demonic training school. But he's already saying mine, like mine. And he pulls it out of my hand. That's not yours. It's mine. And we know that's not very attractive. He's going, no, 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 share. But could it be as we get older, we take on that mindset again and we go, mine. And God has to teach us again, share. So let's take a look at this. Lesson number one. Every time we give, we are planting seeds. We're planted financial seeds that God will turn into a spiritual harvest. We are guaranteed to get a harvest if we plant. Look at this in 1 Corinthians 9, 6. Follow with me. Now, this is what God's saying in the scripture. Remember this. Like, think about this. He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows generously, that blessing may come, that blessings may come to others. So you sow, so blessings may come to others. So what's the purpose of giving? So blessings may come to others. Why do we give? So blessings may come to others. Why do we give? So blessings may come to others. We'll also reap generously and be blessed. Planting and harvest always planting and harvest always come together. So we plant a seed and we sow a financial seed so that blessings can come to others. But God is saying it also comes with a release of blessing on you. It's impossible to plant a harvest and not get a return. It is possible to invest in the stock market and lose everything you got. But it's not possible to invest in God's kingdom and not get blessed. It's impossible not to bless others and it's impossible not to get blessed. Come on, are you getting a little more excited about giving? Planting and harvest has always come together. In Genesis 8.22, look what it says. As long as the earth continues, there will be planting and harvest. As long as the earth continues, there'll be a loss. And it's the law of seed time and harvest. There's no such thing as planting without a harvest. Now, in this scripture, he's talking about giving. And he looks at our finances as seed. He goes, and every time you give, understand the law of seed time and harvest is activated. So when you give, there will be people being blessed. That's the harvest. And also a blessing coming back to you. That's the harvest. How many want both of those harvests to be activated? So what's the two harvests of giving? Say with me, the two harvests of giving. So anytime God is asking us to give, he has a harvest in mind, a return in mind, profit in mind. God has a mission to impact two lives when we give. The lives of the recipient of the blessing and the life of the giver. So God wants to impact two lives. He wants two lives to be blessed or two lives to have an impact. The one that's receiving and the one that's giving. Harvest number one, a harvest of people being saved and blessed by our giving. The reason we give is so we can see people saved. This is the only organization in the world. I'm talking about the church of Jesus. 
that gives finances and it's actually turned into souls getting saved. All other transfers on this earth turn into personal wealth. They turn into maybe organizational advancement. But this is the only way that we could actually take finances and turn them into a harvest of souls being saved for eternity. In John 4, 36, it says this. The harvesters are paid good wages. And the fruit they harvest is people brought into eternal life. What joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike? Say it with me. Planter and what? Is there joy for both? God is saying your future, if you, if you ever become a sower and you become a planter and you become a generous giver, this is what God is guaranteeing you. In your future, there's going to be great joy. You're going to be emotionally healthy because understand this, the, you become really unhealthy as a person when you become self-centered. It doesn't matter how much money you get, you always want more. And if you don't watch it, your heart becomes stingy. And you start alienating yourself from the need because you're thinking everybody wants your money. And if you want to do that, this is guaranteed. Your future will be lonely and you'll be really depressed. The only thing that's going to matter when it's all said and done in your day when you pass and we do your funeral, it's not how much money you saved, it's how much money you gave. Let's think about that. So harvest number one is souls coming into eternal life. People are going to be saved. Every time we bring our tithe, every time we're bringing an offering, this is what's happened. We're making disciples of Jesus Christ. And when we show up into heaven, there's going to be a harvest waiting for us because we invested here on earth. And I understand there's going to be people waiting for us and saying, I'm here because you gave. I'm here because you sacrificed. I know you didn't know me. I was all the way in Cockamega. I was a little orphan, but God had a vision to reach me. And I know you love God and you love me because you're willing to give. I went to the school. And if there wasn't that school, I wouldn't be in heaven today. Thank you. The second harvest, a harvest of blessing is released on the giver. Now, I want you to get this. We're not saying that's the end game, the end result. I just want to be blessed. This is going to be a natural result of your giving. It's not that you might be blessed. God is saying it's impossible for you to sow seed without a personal harvest coming back to you. Give me your five loaves and your two fish, and I guarantee you at the end you'll have 12 full overflowing baskets to take so you can bless some more people. So there's going to be a harvest of people being blessed and saved, but there's going to be a personal harvest that's going to come back to you. In Proverbs eleven twenty four, 24, it says this. Check this scripture out. Some people give freely and gain more. So the people that give freely, willingly, let me just willingly, what happens is then they gain what? Why? Because they're planting seed. Because God never wants you to be in a position not to be a blessing. So he sets it up. He goes, I set it up before, at the beginning of earth, seed time and harvest. It's a law. And if you give, I promise you this, you'll gain more. God's not saying, I want to take your seed away. I want to get you a harvest. Look what it says. Some people give freely and gain more. Others refuse to give and end up with less. Wow. So there's, there's a group that says, I'm not going to give. Understand, less is in your future. Why? Because only money that's invested multiplies. So if you don't invest your money, you just keep it in the bank and not invest it, every day your money is losing value just with inflation. Only those that are willing to invest will ever have a return. So if you're scared to invest, this is what you're saying, in my future, I want less. 
So when God has given us these opportunities, he's saying, okay, I'm giving you an opportunity to expand you. But with every opportunity and every investment, check this out, there's always a transfer of wealth. How many want a transfer of wealth? Come on. Right over here. Only investors get that. Only planters get that. So they say to themselves, what do they say? They say, they others refuse to give. I refuse to give and end up with less. No one has to give. You could give or refuse to give. But don't expect a harvest if you're not a giver. Look, it says in verse 25, Proverbs eleven twenty-five: 25, give freely and you will profit. So tithes and offerings and this opportunity to give is an opportunity for God to get your harvest. He's always wanted to get you. God's trying to get you, give, he's trying to give you more if you could be faithful with what he's already put in your hand. Help others, look what it says, and you will gain more for yourself. Isn't that interesting? Help others and you'll gain more for yourself. My, my daughter, I told you last week, she's learning about giving and sowing and planting seed, finding needs and meeting them. She's up, she was up here on the stage. God's transforming her life by making her realize there's people around you that are hurting, in need, and it's your responsibility to do what you can. Well, she, I mean, she probably, she don't make any money really. She makes like 100 every two weeks or something. So any money, she's a good saver. She really is a great saver. So she saved, I would say, maybe $1,200. And then she found some, someone in her P12 was saying, pray because I have bills I can't pay. And, and the person or P12 has a responsibility, has rent, children, all that stuff. And, and then God told my daughter, help her. It's 500 bucks. And my daughter was saying, 500 bucks, that's almost everything I have. So my daughter listened to the spirit and she gave. She gave her the 500. She didn't let her know that she gave it to her. She just sent it anonymously. The girl comes back and says, you won't believe it. Somehow, the money came. I'm so excited. I was able to pay my bills. and took that pressure off of mama. The next few days later, my daughter gets for the first time ever in her life a check for $535 in the mail. She's never got a check in the mail. It was a 500 plus a little interest. So she comes up to me because I'm paying for her college course school. And it was actually a refund because of COVID from the university. And she comes to me and says, Dad, here's a check that, that they gave. And I know you pay for my school. Here's the five. It's in her name, but she wanted to give it to me just being honest and real. And I go, oh, no, honey, you could keep it. And then she goes, oh, man. God is answering my prayer because he told me to give 500 and now he's returning it to me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. So give and you get more. So give and what? More. But she didn't know when she, I told her right at that day, I told her, Annalisa, more is coming. And she goes, more. And she didn't listen to me really. She thought I was just saying that that's a good thing to say. But she didn't know the day before I bought her a car. She's been asking me for a car all year long because her bumpers are falling off her car. It's just a real mess. I mean, the car is a clunker. I mean, it is embarrassing. Every time she's driving, you know, it's just pieces falling off the car. The paint is just, it's, it's, it's a bucket. I mean, it's pretty bad, right? No, it's just horribly looking. And dash is all cracked up. It's just really bad. It looks like a rat just ate the whole dash. And everybody else has decent cars in our family. She's the one. And you're the youngest. This is what you get. <laughs> but her giving released a harvest that God was trying to get her. So she got the 535. I already bought the car. The next day, I, I went and picked up the car. And I go, here, baby. Here's the more. She didn't know I already bought her the car. I didn't know why I was buying the car. I didn't know about her release, but God was saying, no, I want to get her a harvest. She's released it. She's been a blessing, and I want to release more to her. So today, I got a letter from one of our members from a church. 
I read the letter, and there's a, there's a gentleman in our church, and he said that, he said that he's a father of five. And because of the choices that he's made, he's never been able to be a father. He's, the ne- he's disconnected from his daughters, from his children, and he's now 73 years old. He goes, I can't even give to my own kids. But when I heard that story, I thought maybe I could invest in your daughter as a reference that I'd be given to my daughters. So today, Annalisa doesn't know this, but there's another $500 check in the back for her. And it was all activated. Come on, thousands of dollars, come on, were released into her life by an activation of an offering. Isn't that awesome? Lesson number two. Lesson number one was every time we give, we're planting seeds. Lesson number two. The amount of seed we plant will determine the amount of harvest we receive. Now, don't get offended by this. It's just farming we're talking about. If you plant more seeds, you get a bigger harvest. How many understand that? This is basic stuff. So God's given a seed to plant. Great. You could plant a seed or not plant a seed. You could give and not give. We could let this opportunity pass us by or we could say, no, we're going to, God, we're ready to sacrifice for this opportunity. And God says, okay, I'm ready to release some blessing in your life. So now we should be asking, what can I do and what's the best I can do? Don't give thoughtlessly. Think within, think about the lives. Think about what God has done in your life. Think about the school. Think about those little boys and little girls. Come on. Think about those that are right now in a concentration camp of the devil in Arizona. And God has his angels ready. We're ready to invade Arizona. And God has said, come on to church. I, I've said yes. The board has said yes. Victory Fellowship has said yes. And now it's time for us to say yes. Look at, look at lesson number two. The amount of seed we plant will determine the amount of harvest we receive. In Luke 6, 38, Jesus taught this. Jesus taught this. Give, and you'll receive. What did Jesus teach? And you'll receive. Is that, uh, did he say give and you might receive? He says give and you're what? Not maybe. Well, I want more. God says, come on, I'm going to give you an opportunity for more. See, if you don't have the faith to give, you don't have the faith to receive either. The same faith that you used to give or the same faith you used to invest is the same faith you get a return on. Some people never start the business because they're scared of losing. And if you're scared of losing, you're headed for less. You will lose. Well, it's all we got. I guess that's all you'll ever have. Give and you will. Your gift will return to you in full. So your gift will what? Guaranteed. Not the way you send it out. It's going to come back in harvest form. Pressed down. Shaken together to make room for more. Running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. The amount you give will determine what? Does that make sense? If you invest 10000 or you invest 1000 there will be return on both, but the one that invested 10000 has more shares. And he'll get a bigger harvest. Don't get mad that they invest, they got more. Don't get mad. It's just a law. It's not prejudice. It works for everybody. Some of us right now are being challenged to be a giver. But when you're challenged to be a giver, you're challenged to be like Christ. God's a giver. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life. God loved you. And the way we show love is by our giving. Are you guys still with me? There's three levels of return. Say with me. Three levels of return. We choose. Every time God encourages us to give, it is an opportunity to invest and plant with a guaranteed return. God wants us to give with faith and joy. 
not only are we going to be a blessing, but a blessing is going to be returned to us. Not maybe. Seed time and... Do you understand as a church we're doing more than we ever have? Now we're reaping campuses that God has given us. Why? It's a harvest. Three levels of giving. You determine which level you want to be at. Level one, no seed planted equals no harvest received. So if you plant nothing, there's no return. If you give nothing, there's no return. If we give nothing, there's no school in Kenya. Kids are going to be lost, destroyed. The Muslims will take them in. They'll be eternally lost because we said no. There would be no harvest of souls. The other thing, there will not be a harvest in your life with your kids either coming to Jesus because you can't get a harvest you're not willing to invest in. The next generation is dependent on your investment today. Give them a spiritual inheritance. But you cannot have a spiritual inheritance if you have no spiritual investment. Could it be that your harvest is your own kids coming to Jesus? Your whole family? And God says, you don't even know what I'm ready. See, Annalisa didn't know what he, God was trying to get to her. She only knew what God was trying to give through her. So God will tell you what he wants to give through you, but he's going to surprise you what he's going to give to you. And the surprise is above and beyond what you could ask or think. Come on, get, get excited about giving. It's a great opportunity. Someone says it's an opportunity. Giving is an opportunity. Second level of giving. A few, feeds, a few seeds planted, small harvest. A few seeds planted, small harvest. You guys get that? And the last level is generous amount of seeds planted and a large harvest. <laughs> With every God-given opportunity, there will be a transfer of wealth. And God says, the level you give will determine the level you receive. So we're going to get an opportunity, church, and, and the board has said yes to both of these visions, the school and also Safford, Arizona. God has told us how this needs to be done. We are not going to Safford, Arizona with debt. Debt is not a blessing. Debt is a curse. We're not going under a curse in Safford. And this idea, do we have the faith to launch a church? Do we have the faith to build a school? We're not going to, to Kenya and taking a $70,000 loan so we could build a church. Because we serve a God that owns it all. Come on, God. God's, he goes, no, we're going to do this. But it's going to take a stretch and it's going to take faith. So this, this we're going to do an offering just now, but this... This is not the offer for this school unless someone decide they want or, or for Safford. But on next Sunday, not next Sunday, on Easter, I want you to take one of these offering envelopes and pray about it. Don't give thoughtlessly. Pray about it. And ask God, what should I give? Ask him and let him give you an answer because what he asked you to give, like God told my daughter to give 500, but there, there was a harvest that he was trying to get from her. And he was saying, your level of sacrifice is going to determine the level of blessings coming your way. I'm trying to get you a really big blessing. I'm trying to reach a lot of people through you, baby. And what's so cool, my daughter, when she got her car, she goes, Dad, it's everything I ever could have wanted and more. She goes, I could never have picked out a car so perfect for me. And do you know I wasn't looking for a car for her? I was not looking for a car for her. I was eating a Sizzler, and I look across the street while I'm eating, and I see a car across the street on a car lot that has three cars. <laughs> in Banning or something. Like, never ate that Sizzler my whole life. I'm stopping there. Three cars on the lot, and I, I look at that car and go, that's cute. That's a nice car. So Lisa, I didn't even tell Lisa, like, I like that car. After we eat, I'm going to go drop, drive over there. I get, I, we get out of Sizzler, and instead of turning left on their main road, I just crossed the street. And she goes, what are you doing? I go, I want to take a look at that car. 
She goes, for what? I go, this, I think it's a nice car for Annalisa. Let's see what it costs. And it just ended up being in my budget. And really, it's a car that should have cost maybe a third more, but it was just perfectly. They might have had it on the lot for a while. They, that was saved up. That car was, they, I guarantee, this car is so nice. They should have sold it months ago, but they couldn't sell it. And they only made like 200 bucks on the car because they wanted to get rid of it. But it was perfect for Annalisa. It was, do you understand there's a harvest waiting for you? And God says, I've been waiting. Come on, I got this harvest waiting for you, but I need you to activate it. We're going over this, guys. It's part of the gospel. It's part of reaching people. And until we get the heart of God, we can't get the harvest of God. Every harvest comes with an investment. Come on, you guys got to understand that. We're investors. Someone said we're sowers. So I want you to, uh, so what's, what are we doing? To launch that church in, in Arizona, the debt that we're taking on, the buildings are worth millions of dollars. But the debt that we're taking on is $791,000. We want to pay that off. The school doesn't cost as much to get it going and start it with some teachers. $60,000 in Kenya. So it's $850,000, $51,000 is what is total investment. We're not launching Arizona unless we're debt free. So the proof that we're ready is us activating our faith. So all I'm asking is for you to ask God what he have you to give and then give it. And if you, want, if you don't want to give, you, you, no one has to give. You could give or refuse to give. That's it. That, that's fine. I'm not, there's, no, there's no pressure on this. There should be an excitement. You're a believer. There should be an excitement. Like, oh, my, I'll get it. I can't, the offer is not right now. No, it's not. I want it to be right now. That's what should be happening in your spirit. But if we had, it, just if we had 850 people gave $1,000, we could give. For some of you guys are business people, you're going to be thinking about a bigger offering than that. But some of us need to be thinking, oh, I could do that. Or if, or if 1,600 people gave 500, someone said, oh, that's the number. I, I, that would be a stretch. You're going to be like Annalisa, <laughs> and that's going to be a big thing for you. Or even, say, man, if... if, if 3,000 people gave 250, we could do that. And you might say, oh, that's my number. Or God's just going to give you a number. It doesn't matter. But all of us just come with an offering for harvest. Uh, uh, just so you guys know, if this is your first time here, I haven't talked about giving in years. Like, I, I don't, I'm not even doing I, This is the first lesson I've taught on giving in probably three or four years. But the only reason I'm doing it because I already know that God's given us an opportunity. And this opportunity goes, make sure you're letting the church know. God's the one who told me to speak on this. My response to giving. He's saying, come on, I'm ready to bless my people. I'm ready to reach more people. And just let them know I'm ready to do something. And I don't want them to miss this opportunity. Is it? How many believe we could do this? So let's, let's, let's do this. Let's give right now. Take an envelope home and pray about it. But let's give our regular tithes and offers. And for someone, this might be your first time giving. Watch God bring you a harvest. Give and you'll receive. Give. Say it with me. Give and you'll receive. Give and how many believe that's going to happen? Get ready. It's time. Someone's going to grow up right now be spiritual. I'm going to. Finally be a giver. I've received, now it's time for me to give. Let's, let's, let's give with a church heart. We're going to sing this song. As soon as we're done giving our tithes and offerings, there's three ways to give. You could give on the app. The second way is the way.gives. You could go on, on any browser, the way.gives. And the third way to give is if you need an envelope, just raise your hand. And we got some kiosks on the side. You could give there as well. And, um, or you could bring it in person during the week. So I like to write old-fashioned checks. You could do that, and, and I, I'm kind of like a check writer still too, so I totally understand that. And I, I do all my bills uh, like on uh, like the checks. I have to go over there and get those, those, what do you call it? What do you call those stamps? <laughs> yeah, so anyways, that's what I do. But anyways, if you want to do that, you can come during the week and give. How many are excited about this opportunity? Come on. Are, are you with me? Come on. Are you saying yes? Are you saying yes? Are we saying yes together? Let's give right now with a cheerful heart our tithes and offerings, and then Pastor Rao will close us out. Thank you.